There's been some online discussion and questions in the comments of my previous videos on how well the new TXS decoders will fit in people's existing locomotives, non-Hornby ones in particular. There's some good news and some bad news, so let's get into some of the numbers and put this issue to bed if we can. It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's video. I'm going to keep this as short as possible. We'll take a look at the three decoder types that are currently available, starting with the 8-pin version followed by the next 18, and finishing up with the 21-pin version. I'm going to focus on sound-enabled decoders here, as these will be the most challenging from a fit perspective, and right now Hornby haven't published the dimensions of the non-sound Bluetooth decoders, so we have nothing to compare against. So let's kick off and look at the 8-pin decoders first. So at the top here, I've got the Hornby Bluetooth decoder with its dimensions. And you can see there that there's a, they're in orange. And the reason they're in orange is because they compare a mix of favorably and unfavorably against the competitors. There's a good match with the existing TTS decoders. So that's good news. And in most cases, they should be an easy uh, one for one fit and replacement. Uh, obviously, you'll have to work the speakers and you'll have to pick an enclosure that will fit in the particular locomotive. And if you do need to fit in the power bank, well, then obviously you'll need to accommodate that as well. So that would be an extra if you're upgrading from TTS. Comparing here with the Locksound 5, uh, there's two versions of this. There's a standard kind of version, which is basically their 21 pin version, just brought out to a separate header. Uh, and then they've got a micro version. And this is the one, obviously, that the new Bluetooth decoder doesn't fare too well against. This is quite a compact decoder. Uh, coming in there at 21 millimeters by 10 millimeters and, and only 3.8 millimeters in, in height or thickness. That's pretty impressive stuff. And obviously for the smaller locomotives that would have an 8-pin connector, then that's probably going to be a better fit. And similarly with the Zemo one at the bottom there, that's you know pretty well the smallest of them all, you know, at 19 by 11 by 3.1, which is a really low profile. That's why it's an orange. Uh, it is a good match for the TTS versions, but maybe not so good a match against some of the competitors. So really an orange on the 8-pin decoder from a fit perspective. Now let's look at probably the most controversial one, which is the Next18 decoder. And you'll have seen this in a number of videos online and people complaining about the fit here. And you can see from the numbers why there's a problem. So you've got a 28.5 millimeter length, and that in particular seemed to be the biggest issue for people. Now, you might ask the reason, why is there such an issue and why is it so long? Uh, I believe if you do look at the extra length on this particular decoder, you'll see that it's actually taken up by the Bluetooth antenna. They've used that space for that antenna and obviously they couldn't really accommodate it within the existing profile. Uh, they seem to have done that for the other decoders, uh, the 8-pin and the 21-pin, but certainly on the Next18 decoder, they did seem to need the extra space for the Bluetooth antenna and that's why it is not physically larger. Uh, than its competitors, which obviously don't have a Bluetooth antenna on them. So this is not good. It, it measures unfavorably against the Loxone 5 uh, equivalent and the Zemo equivalent, uh, both of which are substantially shorter in length and also narrower as well, uh, and also have a, a smaller thickness. So the numbers tell it all. I don't need to say any more. You can see the differences here. While the next decoders may be fine for some of the newer locomotives that have been built to accommodate them, clearly you're going to have an issue with other locomotives are non Hornby vendor locomotives that were designed for a next 18 decoder and were probably designed with the two bottom decoders here in mind and not the Hornby one, obviously, which didn't exist until a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so it's a red on the next 18, I'm afraid, uh, from Hornby. It'll be good with the Hornby locomotives, most likely, the, certainly all the newer ones, but it's going to be a real challenge for smaller locomotives, particularly ones from other vendors. So let's get into the 21 pin decoder. And I guess this one isn't too bad and is, is actually reasonably favorable, I think, overall, if you look at the numbers. The Loxon 5, you know, as a standard, really comes in at that standard 30 millimeter by 15.5 with that 5.5 millimeter thickness. And the Hornby uh, Bluetooth decoder is just a little bit smaller than that. So uh, very positive here. And certainly I've had no issues in fitting in the, the new decoders into, a, they say, Backman locomotives, for example, where I would have had a 21 pin decoder previously. So a green on this one, uh, you can see it against the Zemo as well. Now the Zemo does have a slightly uh, a narrower profile and is also a, a, a smaller thickness. So there may be some locomotives, particularly ones that may come with uh, factory fitted sound that was Zemo based, 
and would have been designed for the Zemo decoder, then they may be a challenge to upgrade to the Hornby because they were designed specifically for that Zemo decoder. There'd be, there'd be a challenge to upgrade to a Loxon 5 as well. You wouldn't be able to do that either. So our soundtracks economy, which I've also put on here, and that's got pretty well the biggest dimensions of all these uh, decoders. So again, if you've got a locomotive with the Soundtrax decoder in it, it's going to be pretty easy to swap that out. There shouldn't be any fit problems with, with that. So overall, I'm giving a green here to the 21-pin Bluetooth decoders from Hornby with sound. They are a pretty good fit here. And the only exception really is the Zemo ones. And I think that's most likely going to be an issue if you have a factory fitted version of one of these. If you have an off-the-shelf version, most locomotives will all be built to accommodate the Loxon 5s, so you can be pretty sure if, if there wasn't built-in sound, then you should be good to go with a 21-pin decoder. So that's it. It's good news on the 21 pins. It's a middling news on the 8 pins, but it's good news from the perspective that replacing an 8-pin TTS is fine and you shouldn't have an issue there. And then there is an issue on the next 18, as people have already indicated in various videos online. So hopefully the numbers here are of use and of good reference. Uh, it's worked fine, etc. So uh, please put those in the comments. But I want to do this quickly, uh, give you the numbers, and now you've got the data, you can run with it, and you can hopefully make the right decisions in terms of what decoders to buy and whether the Bluetooth ones are going to work for you or not. I think the, the Bluetooth antenna is a little bit of an issue, and that is going to mean that these are both going to be slightly bigger, probably, or certainly no smaller in most cases. You know, that's the price of getting Bluetooth on board. I am going to be doing some running sessions uh, with locomotives containing these particular decoders, the TXS decoders, to kind of test them out on non-Hornby locomotives. That's kind of what I'll be focusing on. And just to see how the sound goes and how the locomotives perform uh, with these decoders, replacing typically a lock sound 5 in most cases they'll be replacing. So we'll get a feel for that. So hopefully I'll one of those out in the next few days and we can take a look at that. Okay, thanks for joining today. We'll see you on the next one. And in the meantime, take care and happy modeling. Oh,